Today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Canada. Freedom According to the 2016 census, there are over 1.2 million black Canadians. Although there are black communities across Canada, the city with the highest black population is Toronto. The first recorded person of African descent to arrive in Canada was a man named Mathieu de Costa, a free man who arrived in 1608. He served as the interpreter during the expedition of the French colonist Samuel Champlain, who established the French colonies of Quebec and New France. Mathieu helped the colonists to communicate with the First Nation people of Canada. In 1689, King Louis XIV authorised slavery in New France, leading to the first black population arriving in significant numbers, which continued throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. One significant 18th century account of a black Canadian was Marie-Josephine Angelique, an enslaved woman in New France who was convicted of setting fire to her master's house. She confessed under torture, though the veracity of her confession is questionable, and she was executed in 1734. In 1776, during the American Revolution, the British government promised land rights to black people, both enslaved and free, who fought on their behalf. This prompted large numbers of black people to migrate to Nova Scotia, which eventually led to race riots sparked by disgruntled white residents. However, many of the black population left again in 1792 and relocated to Sierra Leone, disillusioned by the discrimination they faced in Nova Scotia. In 1793, two major pieces of legislation were passed that caused a large influx of Afro-descendant people to Canada. The first was the Fugitive Slave Law in the US, which authorised local governments to seize and return escaped slaves to their owners. This resulted in over 30,000 enslaved Africans migrating to Canada via the Underground Railroad. The second piece of legislation was the Anti-Slave Bill passed by Lieutenant John Graves Simcoe, which didn't abolish slavery but sought to gradually phase it out. Following the American Revolution, the British government allowed the settlement of over 3,000 black people who had remained loyal to Britain, known as the Black Loyalists. There have been numerous waves of black migration over the 19th and 20th centuries. Many black people worked as porters with the railroad companies, as miners and farmers. A big turning point was the War of 1812, when the United States fought against the British over the British Royal Navy's restrictive policies. Thousands of black soldiers fought on the side of the British and resisted attacks on British Canada as it was then known, cementing Canada's reputation as a safe haven for black people. This prompted thousands of enslaved African Americans to escape and migrate from the United States to Canada, Mexico and other destinations via an immense network called the Underground Railroad. In summary, from the early to mid 19th century, the Underground Railroad was a network of secret routes, safe houses and people who assisted the slaves in escaping, the most famous of whom was Harriet Tubman. Born in Maryland in 1820, Harriet Tubman escaped from slavery and went on to become a leading abolitionist who led many enslaved people to freedom via the Underground Railroad, the network by which she herself had escaped. The network provided food, clothing, financial assistance and safe lodgings for escaped enslaved African Americans. Harriet Tubman died on March the 10th, 1913 and March the 10th was declared Harriet Tubman Day in the US and in St. Catharines in Ontario, where she herself had lived for a while. In 2005, the Canadian government declared Harriet Tubman a person of national significance. In 1833, the British government abolished slavery across most of the British Empire, and in 1851, the Anti-Slavery Society of Canada was formed. That same year, James Douglas became the first appointed politician of African descent in Canada and became the governor of the colony of British Columbia. He invited African Americans to emigrate to Victoria and in 1861, the Victoria Pioneer Rifle Company was formed, Canada's first and only black police force. Sadly, in 1910, the Canadian government implemented a racist policy which prevented immigration by races deemed unsuited to the requirements of Canada. This dramatically reduced the number of black people entering Canada for the next few decades. The First and Second World Wars were pivotal moments for the black community in Canada. During World War I, black volunteers to the Canadian Expeditionary Force were initially refused, but this was later overturned. Black Canadians were eventually restricted to construction units digging trenches on the front line and in 1916 the all-black unit, the number 2 construction battalion, was formed. 
That said, approximately 2,000 black Canadians did fight as infantrymen, such as James Grant, who was awarded the Military Cross in 1918 for his bravery. Again, during World War II, black volunteers were initially refused, but this was reversed in 1940. Even then, the army accepted black volunteers before the Navy or the Air Force. This time, black soldiers served in racially integrated units. In 1944, Ontario passed the Racial Discrimination Act, which banned the use of symbols or signs by businesses with the intent of racially discriminating. In 1946, a black Canadian named Viola Desmond made the headlines when she refused to move from a whites-only section of a cinema, which led to her being dragged out by policemen. Although she was convicted and fined, the case received much media attention and eventually led to the end of segregation laws in Nova Scotia. Viola was posthumously pardoned in 2010. An important bastion of black Canadian history is Afriqueville, a predominantly black settlement that existed in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Although there has been a black presence in Nova Scotia since before Halifax was founded in 1749, it was only after the American Revolution that black settlers arrived in large numbers. A black presence has been recorded in Afriqueville since 1848. It was formed due to black Canadians being marginalised by wider society and forced to create their own settlements on hostile land. For 150 years, Afriqueville was populated by hundreds of black families who created their own schools, stores, a post office and a Baptist church, which also served as a social centre. Sadly, the residents of Afriqueville were neglected by the local authorities and did not have access to many fundamental amenities, including a sewerage system, clean water and garbage disposal, despite the taxpaying residents of Afriqueville petitioning the local authorities several times. The town was systematically deconstructed over many years, ending in 1970. However, many families had lived on their land for generations without having formal deeds, and they were offered a measly $500 in compensation. There were also instances of bribery and intimidation tactics to force residents to relocate. In the 1980s, former residents took matters into their own hands and formed the Afriqueville Genealogy Society to seek justice for the deconstruction of their community. In 2010, the mayor of Halifax publicly apologised for the deconstruction of Afriqueville and allocated a plot of land and $3 million to build a replica of the former church, which today serves as the Afriqueville Museum. In 2015, there was a successful petition to change the names of 11 places in Quebec that either contained the N-word or the word neg in French, which had historically derogatory connotations. This include the N-word rock near St. Armand and the N-word river near Sherbrooke. The petition received almost 2,000 signatures. Many black Canadians are notable for being the first black person to achieve certain positions in Canada. These include William Hall, the first black person to receive the Victoria Cross, Leonard Braithwaite, the first black Canadian to be elected to the Ontario Legislature, Rosemary Brown, the first black woman to run for the leadership of a Canadian federal party, Willie O'Ree, Canada's first black hockey player in the National Hockey League, Jean Augustine, the first black Canadian woman elected to the House of Commons, and Michael Jean, the first black Governor General of Canada. Notable black history museums in Canada include the Amherstburg Freedom Museum, the Buxton Museum, the Sheffield Park Museum and the Black Cultural Centre for Nova Scotia. Famous black Canadians not already mentioned include the journalist and TV presenter Tracy Moore, author Tessa McWatt, actress Kay Livingstone, boxer Lennox Lewis, actor Jeffrey Boyer Chapman, singer The Weeknd and the rapper Drake. That brings us to the end of our video on the African diaspora in Canada. If you're interested in black history in other countries, then I have videos for you on tons of other destinations. And don't forget to find me on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official for a daily dose of black history content that you are guaranteed to enjoy. That's it from me. I'll see you next time. Freedom is mine.